It's 1075, things are heating up. King William has gradually been constricting the power of his earls. Ralph de Gale, the Norman Earl of East Anglia, is not happy. Nor is his friend Roger de Brettel, Earl of Hereford, and the son of one of William's most loyal followers, William Fitz Osborne. William had shrunk the earldom of Hereford and sent in his own sheriffs to control the marcher earldoms. The two aren't happy, so they decide to take matters into their own hands. 1075. The Revolt of the Earls. In 1075, Ralph de Gale, Earl of East Anglia, married Emma, the sister of his co-conspirator, Roger de Bretel. At the feast there were many important figures, bishops, abbots, earls and magnates. One of these guests was particularly significant, Wolfdeoff, Earl of Northumbria, and the last surviving Saxon Earl. Wolfdeoff was son of Earl Seward of Northumbria, the Earl who had been replaced by Tostig Godwinson after his death in 1055. Wolfioth had only been allowed to remain Earl after submitting to William. Moreover, Wolfioth had been part of the rebellions in the north, however, was pardoned again after submitting. It was at this wedding feast that Ralph and Roger decided to tell Wolfioth about their plans. It is likely they hoped getting Wolfioth on board would help win them the widespread support from the Anglo Saxons which they needed. As well as gaining them the support of the Danes, Wolfioth had strong contacts with King Swain of Denmark. The plan was for them to overthrow William, dividing his kingdom into three, between them. They also took care to time the planned revolt with when William was away in Normandy, leaving Archbishop Lanfranc as regent. The plan was underway. However, it never really did kick off. First of all, Wolfioth changed his mind, deciding better than to take part in the revolt. He informed Lanfranc of the plans. In response, Lanfranc sent out men to see what was happening in the earldoms of Hereford and East Anglia. Upon their return, the men reported that the rebels were strengthening the defences of their castles and building up their troops, ready for a combined attack. Lanfranc wrote letters to Roger de Bretel, trying to dissuade him from rebellion and reminding him of his own father's loyalty to William, though these letters had no effect. So Lanfranc changed his strategy, instead choosing to use excommunication, the act of expelling someone from the church, meaning they couldn't confess their sins before they die and will be doomed to burn in hell an effective tactic for a religious nation. Meanwhile, preparations were being made elsewhere to counter the revolt. In the west, Bishop Wolfstan of Worcester and the Abbot of Evesham used their troops to prevent Roger from crossing the River Severn, trapping him in Herefordshire. In the east, Anglo-Saxons and Normans joined together in an effort to stop Ralph breaking out of his earldom in East Anglia. The rebellion wasn't exactly going well. They had failed to get the widespread Anglo-Saxon support they needed and as part of the plan, they'd also contacted the Danes, who put together an impressive fleet. 200 ships, led by Canute, the son of King Swain, and Earl Hakon. They even had the support of Brittany and France, Normandy's main rivals, who wanted to weaken Normandy. However, there was a catch. These Danish ships arrived too late. William had already returned to the country. The Danish fleet could have stretched Norman defences beyond their limits. However, as stated in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, the two leaders, Canute and Earl Hakon, dared not join battle with William himself. Instead, the Danish fleet chose not to invade. They raided up the east coast and, as usual, ransacked York Cathedral before returning home again. After the defeat of the revolt, Ralph managed to escape to Brittany, whilst his wife, Emma, chose to hold out in Norwich Castle until she could make a deal which guaranteed her and their followers a safe passage back to Brittany. Wolfioth fled abroad, However, William tricked him into thinking he would be forgiven if he returned. Upon his return, he was imprisoned, and William must have totally run out of patience with Wolfioth, as in May 1076, he was executed in Winchester. Roger was also captured and imprisoned for life. William then travelled back to Normandy, attacking Ralph's castle at Dole. He faced strong resistance and troops sent to aid Brittany from France, so was forced to retreat. And that was the end of the revolt. However, it taught William a valuable lesson or two. First of all, he realised he had to be careful of his own earls. Ambition and resentment had been at the heart of the revolt. The joining of Anglo-Saxons with Normans in preventing the revolt, such as Bishop Wolfstan, suggests some Anglo-Saxons now supported William's rule. And William now stamped down harder on any rebellions which arose, especially if they involved links to Denmark. 1075. The Revolt of the Earls. Thanks for watching. I'm going to say the same thing again. Everyone always does.
but if you'd like to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it.